I know. Good morning, everyone. The time is now 10.05 a.m. This is Christopher D. Greif. Hope everyone's doing well. We like to start the family and provider information. And I know some of you can see me or maybe not seeing me on the camera right now, but you know, as usual, laptops don't like to start this morning, like to go back to sleep. Um, before we uh, start our procedure and anything, and if I go in and out, I apologize, but I remind everyone, housekeeping rules is very important that we remind everyone that uh, at this moment, oh, there we go, we're still talking. Uh, just to remind everyone that on your devices, please make sure that if you're not speaking, please keep your, your microphone muted and please make sure you don't overclick the mute button because you can actually hear your wordings that it is recording on this meeting. So please let's be very careful what we're saying in the meeting and anything. Um, remind you, if you have a question for the speaker or the co-chairs, please make sure you use the hand raise, which is located on your react, reactive little smiley face button area. You can also still put it into the chat, which is available. And please note that some areas have been updated in the Ring Central. As you know, there are updating on a lot of the devices in the 2023 division. So please make sure. Call caption is available if you need it on the CC area. That is available if you want to follow the words as well. We will also remind everyone, once the speaker or co-chairs are finished their reports, the question or raise your hand or please put your comment into the chat will be answered once they're all finished. So let's please make sure we follow everything in the housekeeping procedures. Let's also welcome our co-chairs, uh, Rose Sal, provider, and Deborah Greif, the, the parent. Ladies. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Happy New Year. Let me get my camera on. I'm sorry. Uh, here we go. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. Happy New Year. And sorry, I know we had you waited for a while. For those who are on time, thank you for being timely. My name is Will Sauls, and I am a division director at Brooklyn Community Services, and I am the um, co-chair for the Family and Provider Information Committee, along with my co-chair person, Deborah Greif, who was talking to you guys earlier. Uh, I am sorry, was I muted all this time? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I no, looked at my mic and I saw that I was no, muted. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> it was just that I, I, you got to be careful with the mouse. Sometimes when you don't overclick it, it does do that. And it's been going that with Zoom because it's happening with another meeting. Okay. So that's why I will remind everyone, please compare to hard. Got it. Okay. So I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass the mic to Deb to introduce herself, and then we'll move on with um, the plan for today. Good morning, everybody. My name is, as Rose said, I'm Deborah Greif. I am the parent co-chair. Yes, I'm also the chairperson of the Brooklyn Family Support Advisory Council, but my role today is parent co-chair, though I have a few little, um, I also want everyone to understand how important it is for parents and the professionals. We need to work as a team because the one, the most important person that we need to help and support is our children who have developmental disabilities. So we need to work together with this committee. Also, we want everybody to please come to the joint meeting of the Brooklyn Family Support Service Advisory Council, which will, and that's also with the Brooklyn DD Council, which will be on Wednesday, January 25th. And it will be on Ring Central. You can always, the dates are always there for on the Brooklyn Family Support Service Advisory Council's website. And I just have a few little updates that I want to give to everybody. First, I want everybody, I don't know if you know that one of a longtime person who's worked with OPWDD up in uh, Albany Central is Roger Bearden. He works very closely with the statewide Family Support Advisory Council, which I do go to, and also the statewide Developmental Disability Council. He'll be, re he'll be leaving at the end of January. I also want everybody to know that, as you know, we now have a new governor. Her name is Kathy Hochul. 
Um, and, and Anthony Delgado is our lieutenant governor. You know, we also have a lot of new elected officials from the state assembly, state senate, and it's very important for everyone here to send in your information to the new assembly and state senate, and plus the current ones too. They need to know everything we need, we're doing, and everything. Also, keep in touch with your your city New York City Council members as well as also your Congress people and also let our two the United States Senators the my minor majority leader is Chuck Schumer his staff welcomes any informa important information you we need to share and also our minority leader also from Brooklyn Hakeem Jeffries a congressman it, he the his staff welcomes any information or in services or if you need help there too also keep in touch with our controller, Brad Landers, as well as our public advocate, Jumani Williams, and of course, our mayor, Eric Adams. Our new borough president for Brooklyn is Antonio Re Reynoso. And yes, his staff would like to be have updates and information sent to them. You can find all their contact information. If it's not by the end of this week, by next week, we'll have it because they all have to also let us know if there are any changes. So with that, I'm going to now, Rose, I'm going to let you take over because we do have a, a, a great presentation this morning. So I'm going to let you take over. I'm going to mute. All righty. Thank you, Debbie. So as you all know, the Family Provider Information Committee, we do our best to kind of bring trainings up front, uh, information up front for both family and providers as well as um, um, care, um, the CCOs, right? So today we have Natalia who's going to be talking about intensive parent training program to AHRC. Um, please um, take as much information as you can and then we'll be doing questions later on. Natalia, welcome. It's great to have you and we can't wait to hear your presentation. Yeah. You are muted, Natalia. You and Natalia, you can also share <laughs> <I know. laughs> your screen. Sorry about that. Yes, that's uh, that's what I'm trying to. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, sorry, it's asking me to do something. I wasn't prepared. Um, there we go. Let's see. Huh. I apologize. I'm not familiar with Ring Central. It's actually right next to the microphone. Actually, it's right next to the camera. It's click on share. It's the blue. I did. I just if couldn't find how to open choose the right the window. So I think that's how oh. you can then do it. It's the same way you do it on Zoom. Yes, it's just, it's not, it said I didn't give it permission, oh, well, but I just did. So I'm me. sorry for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to make sure that it's, it's been given permission. Oh, I might need to send it to you and have someone pull it up because for some reason it's not allowing me. What device are you using? I hope the Mac was updated I'm because I've Mac. been hearing because someone else was using and it in another meeting with the Mac and they've been having issues. Natalia, yeah, do you Rose, want to forward it to me? You share because you're listed. Yes, please. I'm um, just sorry if it's... Okay. I apologize for this. That's okay. And this is the moment where you can't remember how to do things. <laughs> uh, okay, this one and Thank 
There we go. Okay. Rose, yep. your email address. Uh, could you give that to me if that's sure. okay? R Sauls. The letter R S A U L S at I we are. Got it. Okay. Got it. Sorry. I wasn't mm. sure if I had it. She wants to make sure right. it's on its way without a subject. Okay. No problem. I tried to figure this out before and it seemed to be okay. I guess not. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, in the meantime, my name is Natardia Lisoy. I am the family worker at AHRC NYC. And it's the Brooklyn Intensive Parent Training Program. And we also have one for the Borough of Queens. So we have now started in Brooklyn. And um, what I, I actually go in the home. So it's, I think that's one of the key factors that the services are provided in your home. And before I go any further, I'm just gonna wait for, make sure it got to Rose. Mm -hmm. It's coming up. Rose, once you get that PowerPoint on, then click share. Okay. And I have a digital flyer that I will send out to Rose or Deborah or Chris, whoever, and it keeps for distribution versus the deck. Can everyone see it? Yes. Okay. Does it, can you, can it open up or is it not? Um, this is, um, are you uh, able to see it? Because I'm seeing the actual yeah, PowerPoint, Rose, or is that, that's not what you guys email, are saying? Choose your email. I'm seeing you have to email. open that up first. Okay, you need to on. stop yeah. sharing and then click on it. Then it should pop up. But at least you know you, had, you got it. One part, right? On. You got to share the yeah, screen. Hold on. I'm sure. I am not tech savvy. Yeah, don't worry. Hold on. I'm better with people. <laughs> I think we all are. That's why we're in this business, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on one second. I know I stopped sharing. Yeah, this is it. It's here. No, Rose, you should, Rose, See, you have it on I, the wrong uh, anything? No? setting. What? You, you got to make sure your PowerPoint is up first, then click the share. Choose, you choose where you're already on, ring center. Okay. You, we had to see double the Rose or double the Debbie and double the Chris. <laughs> Oh my God. It should be highlighted, I think. Yeah, I, th I thought it was showing up on my end. I, I'm not, for some reason, I don't know. I do. So, okay. This is, and I have it open in three different places. Let me download it. I don't know why. I'm just going to see if, if I can try again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here you go, guys. Okay. Yeah, I can see it. The only question I'm going to say is, it? can you please yes. put your uh, okay. able on and go to the slideshow, and then we can see. Oh, what happened? Bro, you, you just put, you just Here deactivated your share button. Yes. 
code. It's not me. It's it's the technology. It's hold on. Hold on, hold on. Okay, here we go. I got it now. Okay. I I think that's fine. Oh, if that's okay with everyone. Can everyone see it? I guess so. No one is saying yes or no. So I guess we, I can oh. see it. it. It's not okay. in presenter view, but I think that's okay. It's fine. We I can see it. Okay, great. But you just have to sl you'll slowly go down and do your presentation. Good luck. Yes. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Okay. So good morning. Um, again, I'm from AHRC NYC, and uh, one of the things that we are very proud of is that we are advocates. We honor the humanity. We reimagine how the person living with an IDD is seen, and we foster change to do so. So we are a family-governed organization, and as I said before, we are committed to finding ways for people with intellectual and other developmental disabilities build for full lives. And that is going to be defined by each person, and it's supported by dedicated families, staff such as myself, and other community partners. Uh, next slide, please. So, oh, one more thing. I am a licensed creative arts therapist. My title is family worker. So specifically, I'm a drama therapist and I am and licensed because I'm, I'm licensed by the state of New York. So AHRC is a chapter of the ARC. And the ARC's position statement on parents with intellectual and, dis and developmental disabilities is as follows. All adults when provided access to appropriate and effective supports as needed to fulfill the basic responsibilities of child rearing are more likely to be effective in their roles as parents. So I think we kind of know this already. Some of us may be parents on the phone. I know we have at least one parent, Deborah. And at any moment, I think throughout your parenting, there might have been a time where you needed support. And that would be the same thing for our clients, our population. It's access to the appropriate and effective supports is what our program provides that allows them to be better parents, if you will, and to cement their roles as parents. Because even though we think about our population just succeeding, we don't always recognize that they want families as well, because we all think about that when we're, if you're a mom or a dad and you have kids, you want them to grow up and have success. And success can also include being a mom or a dad. And this is very much possible with this program support. Next slide, please. So what are the services that these participating families will receive? As I said before, we provide the services in the home. That is the most convenient place. And that is where family life takes place in the home. So there's in-home parent training, in-home behavior management. What does that look like in home parent training? I will go in and it ranges the children, you know, zero to 18. Mom may be expecting, mom may have a toddler, mom may have preteens, teenagers. And so it's age appropriate support because as kids get older, Sometimes they don't behave as much the way we'd like them to behave and misbehaving is more of the thing. So I work with mom or dad, mainly mom. How do we create a plan of discipline that mom wants to use? So it could be a reward system. When you listen today, you'll get a star because it's age appropriate for that it might be for six year old or five year old. When you're a preteen, it gets a little bit more serious. You need to pick up after your books. You know, you won't get to stay up late an extra half hour. It all varies according to age and what the parent would like. And we discuss the different options and ways and how this can be enforced. So in-home behavior management, that's part of that parent training and intensive case management, that's support that goes beyond the home and advocacy. Those two are somewhat intertwined. This is a process where we empower the caregiver, 
mom, dad, to self-advocate and advocate for their family members. So perhaps there's trouble in the school. They're not doing their homework. Maybe there's a personality concern with the teacher. It's providing the support where I will go into school with them if they like and to have that conversation. One great example of parents participating is the uh, school day where you go to see all the teachers and you learn how the kids are doing. And I went with mom and the kids and she went to the, one of the kids did not want her to see a particular teacher. So, you know, of course there's always suspicious. Why don't you want to see this teacher? But mom did. And she found out really good information of how she was doing in class and how she could better support her at home so that she could be a better student in school. So that's one way um, very simple to support. And another way is we had a student who wasn't getting the services needed. And I was on the phone with mom and dad as they were having a conversation with the principal and the teacher and the counselor. And just being on the phone allowed mom and dad to push for the needs of their child. So that's just a, a basic uh, run of the things that we do and can do. Next slide, please. So what are the requirements? What makes a family eligible? You, the, the parent must have the intellectual and developmental disability and meet the requirements as set forth by the Office for People with De Developmental Disabilities, so OPWDD. They have to meet those requirements. And since this is Brooklyn I'm speaking to today, you must reside in Brooklyn. So it's those three things. It's the parent, not the child. The child may have a disability, that's fine. But it, the, in order to qualify, it has to be the parent with the intellectual developmental disability and then meet the requirements as set forth by OPWDD. And this is Brooklyn, reside in Brooklyn. So it's three simple things in one regard. Next slide, please. Is there a cost to families? These services are provided free to families. There is no cost whatsoever. I come to you, you are not paying for my transportation. We go somewhere, you are not, you are not again, paying for me to be there. It's completely free. If there are supplies needed, maybe perhaps we're working on an activity, I will bring those supplies in. It's not something that the parents have to worry about. Simple thing, the girls were graduating from high school, one of the boys graduating from grammar school or junior high, they wanted to decorate their graduation caps. I brought in the jewels and the different and the paints for them to do that. I bring in the activities for the kids. So we don't have to worry about that. But that's not to say we don't use what's in the home. If the kids have a game, they want to play that's theirs, of course, we'll play that. So these are free services that the families will be receiving. Again, because it ties back to OPWDD, and that's why they need to meet the requirements. Next slide, please. Okay, historically, discrimination towards individuals who live with an intellectual and or dis developmental disability, degradation and involuntary sterilization of adolescents and adults. This was the norm. Use of legal means to remove and deny parents the opportunity to raise their children in their home. So we're looking at three different bullet points there in a sense. There's always going to be discrimination towards individuals who live with an IDDD. We can't change everyone's mind, but we can certainly be a force of change along with the individual, along with the family, community partners and providers. When we work in conjunction, that's how we combat discrimination. So we have to recognize we're combating discrimination, what does the individual living with the IDD want? They want the same future, the same life as everyone else. This is something historically, segregation and involuntary sterilization comes into play. This is how it gets stopped. And there's a history of it. We can't get around that because it, who, who it becomes easier for? The community, providers perhaps, 
you know, other players that are not in our field. And then some people in our field think that this is a good idea. But if you, who doesn't want a family? You, you, this is what you strive for. And this is the means of how it's taken away. And we combat this with a program like this, that they're receiving assistance, that they can do this. And quite frankly, I don't know of a parent, especially first time parent, who isn't living with an IDD, who doesn't need support. So this idea that they can't do it, it's very isolating and othering, and it's not, it is possible. It's the idea that it's not possible is our fears that we're putting onto the community. So how do we use the legal means to remove and deny parents this opportunity to have your child and live, raise your child in your home? Foster care comes into play because there's this notion that, well, if you have an IDD, you can't raise your, you don't cook for your kid. You can't bathe them, clothe them and their babies and, and teach them things. Well, I can come in and I provide modeling. How do toddlers and babies learn? They learn from their parents. They mimic, you know, the sounds they hear their parents talking. So it's very key that I worked with the toddler and I worked with mom on how to play with her toddler so she could, her toddler could develop skills, simple skills that we take for granted, but they're also huge milestones, crawling crawling up the stairs. So I would model with mom, how do we crawl? We want her to use her voice, get her expressions developed. We would sing head, knees, toes, and shoulders, and do things like that. So it's actually a lot of fun in some regards when you think about it, because like, oh, you get to play with the kids. Yeah, it's fun and it's great, but it's also work. It's work for me to make sure that I am providing the right support that that parent needs. So, and there's also the very key thing that a cloak of confidence and wanting to appear like everybody else lends itself to the notion of also wanting a family because they know that they deserve and we know they deserve the same rights that everybody else has. And I think um, tying it up there, if anyone has any questions or are you waiting later for questions or as you just guys let me know how you're doing that. So the contact, my, that's my phone number and my email address. And Annette Polino is the supervisor for the program. And that's how you can contact me via phone or via email. And I'm located at the Maiden Lane offices downtown. Do you have any questions or are you doing questions? Any comments? I'm sorry, uh, Debbie will be with you in just a second. She just came to my end. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that, well, I'm well sorry, there's one reason muted. why we have to be muted. I did we want to make sure we hold I hear her from the muted. recording. Uh, I do have a question for her um, regarding your uh, training because I've been hearing a lot of people um, in the other boroughs, but I'm also hearing our borough, um, when they do uh, do join with you guys, and I know a fact that you guys have been letting, I can definitely know you guys have been using our website because I can tell you right now, look, I was looking at it, and oh my God, how the numbers go up, and information does share. Um, since you've been doing a lot of parent training, are you guys gonna be doing this at the schools as well? Because that's where the stronger problems are. So these students are I, from home. Really they just—I just, just want to know that you guys been trying to get attention to the, some of the schools where uh, parents may need some training from home or going to you know once they graduate. Okay, so when you say parents, are you referring to parents living with the IDD or are you referring to the kids with the IDD? Okay, so if it if the parent doesn't have an IDD, they don't qualify for the program. Mm -hmm. If it's the parent with the IDD, the best 
way to reach us um, is, well, right now, if you know someone, you can give them the information. It helps to go through the counselor. Um, I have been trying to reach in schools, the well, more of the transition years when you're transitioning out, just because that's the, the typical age where you, maybe you go off to college, you get a job, start a family, like it, it, it varies and that's really the pinpoint. Um, but it, 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 it hasn't been that it, we haven't tried to get into school. It, there's a, a misconception about the program, which we've always tried to correct. I, it's the parents with the IDD and not the child. The child can have it, but it's the parents who qualify for the program. And then the family receives the services in that regard. So if you do have a name for a school, a counselor or principal, I can reach out to them. Uh, Chris, if you know, because you, uh, if anyone's speaking about this particular, well, name, I may have something you better for you, which I'll do my report later. I will follow up. Um, the transition committee, uh, which is part of the Brooklyn DD Council okay. subcommittee, just like provided information, and I know Rose and Debbie can back me up. Um, they do meet, and it may be a good idea if you get a chance to just pop yourself in that meeting also, because we have they have two new co-chairs. And that's another way to put your foot into the door as well. Okay. Um, I will have I will have it on yes. my report. Yes, in the little, please, please. You're on I, uh, right I now. We're sharing your screen that, right please. now. Or I'm sorry, Rose did. Sorry, Rose. I'm going to get used to that. But um, um, but okay. I will say this: I have been <laughs> not hearing any complaints. But I will say this: um, I definitely, if you have a chance, and I'm going to be serious because I know parents had a lot of worriness. Uh, there's a lot of problems that are also happening in Queens as well. I know you may have heard of it, but just to keep your uh, eyes and ears peeled because there's been a lot of issues in those areas in Queens. I don't want to say the names of it because it could be much more, but it is also, it has been, there has been a lot of issues in the schools and outside the schools. So there is going to be a lot of families that have lack of information. And I hope that Deborah can unmute herself and she can bounce with me with some of the uh, issues as well. Okay, one problem though is, and I do agree with you about, you see a lot of people do not want to accept when a parent has a developmental disability and that's, oh, you, it's very hard to get people to understand that our children children our kids can actually become parents yes. and but the big problem also of course is they get married and they're on SSI things get messed up with their benefits that's also another problem but that's for but that also is something I hope you're also looking at to help those families the problem also is at schools is that the Department of Ed does not always un listen or understand what Families who have children, either they have development disability and their children do, they're always like trying to push the kids to go up to a more, what they consider the least restrictive setting, which really isn't always appropriate because not everybody can learn when 35 people or more are in the room. Right. And and also parents, also both, both everyone has to accept, and the Department of Ed doesn't because they give into parents' fears of the, Oh my God, what's my child going to do? Going to have no purpose life because they can't work. Everybody has a purpose because whether you can go to work, you volunteer or you help, you have a purpose because you are alive. It's fine. You're allowed to be having disabilities. And this is a big problem. Also, the parent of the your individual who you're working with, who is also a parent, a lot of times we'll call them the grandparent, can be very over controlling. But that's because they had to be to protect and get their children's services and grandchildren too. You're right. You and those are some of the them? areas that we do try to navigate. Just to let you know, I work with mm -hmm. Kate Hoy also at AHRC mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the mm -hmm. Department of Ed. Fully, I, I am aware uh, very much so of the challenges that the DOE presents to the families and to us as providers and mm -hmm. trying to assist the families as well. Um, so that is, there is support. I reach out 
to other providers within AHRC, as well as the, what the city has to offer, such as like something like early intervention. You know, I, I'm, I'm able to, I, I like to say gently nod the, and grease those wheels a bit because I'm also limited. I'm not the parent of what I can do and they don't necessarily have to speak to me. So it's, you know, obviously, and, and grandparents, you're right about the grandparents. And so I've, I've been fortunate to work with grandparents who have been supportive and have, you know, they, some at times very hands-off in the sense, okay, she can do it. You can do it. And th sometimes, you know, the, 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 they have that need. I need to step in more and it's, it's a delicate balance. And so I, I not, and as a, it's a delicate balance and we work towards that um, mm -hmm. as, as well. So yep. I, yes. there's, also, there's also another issue and let, I, and I'm going to tell you this. I've also had the powers don't always follow through with what they're supposed to do. I should know because once the kids leave high school, will go into high school, there's unless they're on the side where, and I'm talking about kids who are in community special ed, they're constantly falling through the cracks. Seriously. So what I'm saying this is that I have seen that the powers start telling the student who doesn't have a power because it's not on their IP, start ordering them around. I should know. I went through that and I had to actually go up to school and actually show them that since my son does not and other families have gone through this, we don't have a power listed. Powers are not supposed to give instructions to, a, to the student unless it's been okay to be with the families too because you could be messing up uh, the way, like say with, in the IEP, also certain behaviors or trainings are set up and you have to do it a certain way. And I just want you to know that you see in District 75, they have the classroom powers, but you see Department of Ed pushes many of our children into non-District 75, the community special ed, they fall through the cracks, they push them out at age 18 when they're not, and they don't get a diploma. And they don't understand, and the parent is like trying to force their child, or I should say now in this situation, the grandparent, to get a diploma. I'm sorry, they can't get a Regents diploma, not because I don't want them to, but because they may not have the intellectual capacity to do it, not putting it da them down. But you have you ever worked with the individuals and their families whose children were placed into the non-district 75 programs uh i i've had families where there was the mom had um a, her, she had the a dd and her son had many concerns and challenges taking place and he was in a six to one setting and that the idea of continuing the care the way he, what, what he's learning in school, what he's learning at home, keeping it streamlined was one of the focuses that I did when I went in the home and to help mom. And she was pretty good about calling the school to know what was going on. She would tell us that, she, you know, I call the school today and, and X, Y, Z, and we're like, good for you. You keep doing it. You're doing the right thing. And so we just constantly supported that. So she knew, and it was just, when it came to her child, um, in terms of how she would work with him, I try to know and understand what they're doing in school to continue that, know and understand what's going at home, because there's also a huge cultural component that mm -hmm. can get neglected. And I take a holistic approach in the services that I provide. I fully recognize that the culture I was raised in is may not be the same culture that I'm walking into. And once I know the culture I'm walking into, I make it my point to learn because they deserve to be raised with their culture as well. There's so many factors taking place that need to be recognized. And that's why I take a holistic approach. Um, so in terms of that, 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 uh, the, the DA, then I did have another family, um, the kids, there, there was a, a IEP attached, and air, there was an. Um, this is where the school really didn't want to have any communication with me, and 
So there's ways to work around it. And we worked around it. And I made sure that mom felt confident in approaching the school. And that's the self-advocacy. That's advocacy. Being able to speak up for herself so that she can advocate for her family. And if it meant I sat next to her when the phone, she had to make a phone call, that's what we did. If it had to do with an email, we're sitting down, we're composing the email together, following up, how does she feel about this, and so forth. Um, I should also note that it's not just me that goes into the home. We have a social worker, um, mm-hmm. not including uh, Annette. She's the supervisor, and she's fully aware of, obviously, what's going on. Um, and she knows the families as well. But we, uh, we do have a behavioral specialist and we do have a social worker um, involved. So I, I'm the full time going in in that regard. Uh, and we have as needed, the so, you know, coming in as well and supporting the families and so forth. Um, and, it, and it works really well with the behavior specialists. And as I said before, I'm a drama therapist. So I take an embodied approach. And so her giving me guidance on particularly how to work with autism and, and her behavioral lens. And then I use my lens and combine the both to work with the child. He ends up benefiting because he's getting double support in a session where, you know, we take it as he can handle it, which was also great for the mom because she needed that structure and support that the behavioral specialist provided. And then I could work with her on modeling and role training. What does it mean to be a mom? What's the mother role and working on that with her. So she was, she got the support that she needed from different angles. Um, I have one more question for you. Yes. Yes. One more question for you. I hope you, it's a question slash statement. I hope you are encouraging them to also become members of their, the school's PTA. And that is a very big voice because honestly, I was constantly threatened by the uh, non, just the non-special ed parents, but I stood my ground because I don't back down. And right. that's, and because I was on the PTA and the PAs or throughout my son's whole school career, what ended up happening was one, I was able to make sure not just every parent, I got helped every parent. And I also forced the school system to see that students with special needs need the help. And what ended up happening is when we were, he was graduating to leave, they were very upset. They didn't want us to go. They were willing, they wanted to fudge his age because they wanted us to stay because we actually made major changes, but we helped everybody. Everybody, we even helped the cross street with the junior high that was there, but we were pushing to make sure and we helped a lot. But, you know, I hope that you also do that because that's another important part of being a parent. They have the right to be a member of the PA. If the child goes to that school, they should be a member of the PA. They are a parent. I don't care if they have what disability they have. And I'm saying it this way because it's not fair when. They're excluded. So I hope that you and your program can add that major component in soon. And also make sure that in there, when they they go to sign in for the school, that they put your name and the name of your agency. They have permission. If you put that on the blue card. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. That we, means that they say something. I said, let's go to the office. You go to the main office and you have them pull out that blue card. Once they see the names there. They have to shut their mouth by law. That one of the, um, what you're touching upon, one of the parents, she was part of the PTA. She Good. was involved. Um, I have another, she's very young mom, young child, and mm-hmm. off to school. Um, she gets the phone calls from the teacher of what's going on and pictures. And she, those are the things that she was nervous about letting her child go to school mm-hmm. and getting on the bus and the school is very good about explaining and sharing mm-hmm. the info. Mm-hmm. And so I would just ask her about it and she could tell me, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing this. And okay, can you have pictures? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's, and, and, and then also knowing your clients because your client can say yes 
because they don't want to get into for whatever reason. And, you know, they have to make sure it, they don't want to talk about yes, because they don't fully understand. They want and that, you and that's to very like key. Right. And it, it's very it's key. Yes. Good. It's very it's key anything. that developing, you know, de developing the relationship, understanding dynamics in the home, because most of the time, right, they're with grand, they're living with their grand, the child's living with grandparents, living with parents, um, understanding that dynamic, working with that dynamic and mm -hmm. knowing fully well that there are family members that can come out of nowhere and not necessarily provide support needed or they can't, you know, it, it, it varies. But um, in terms of the school, we have, I mean, that's, we have the paperwork for mom, dad to fill out, to say it's okay. The parent coordinators, I've reached out to parent coordinators. I've had one who was great and she kept me in the loop of what was going on that I can tell mom report cards are coming. The, did the girls tell you that? So it's time to look for the credit cards and know what's going on. And then of course, you know, sometimes the kids, when they get to a certain age, they're like, I don't need you anymore. And then you have one that's like, I still need you. And mom's like, well, you know, what do we do? And I said, well, this is, you know, this is the new age. This is that they're trans, you know, they're growing up and mm -hmm. now we need to change our approach of how you discipline and how you communicate with her and so forth. So I Definitely with the, the schools that empower to my you. Son and other students that as long, according to the Department of Ed, even when they're 21, we have to sign papers. So I tell them as long as I have to, I'm going to be coming up when you need it I, because I'm your backup advocate. But by law, I have to be involved and I have to sign because you're because it, and you tell them that happens also for general ed students, too. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you're taking away their privileges, but you still, if you're going to be responsible because you sign, I have to see what's going on. And that's something a lot of parents and people don't because they say, oh, he'll get upset. I couldn't care less. My feelings were, I sign the paper. I sign everything from schools. I go up and I see what's going on or I send someone to represent me. So please, that's a part of being an adult too. When you're a parent, you don't give up your rights just because they say, oh, I can handle it. No, by law, you're supposed to be there, the parent. Not there all the time watching what they do, but you're the one who has to meet with them. You have to go. If there's a problem, it's the parent because they make you sign. So student has to understand that. And that's just because you care about and you want them to succeed. And that's what I've always told a lot of the students. After a while, they back off and they see I'm right. <laughs> but yeah. thank you for your answers. Oh, you're welcome. Does anybody you're welcome. else have any questions or have anything they want to ask? Hi, Natalia. Hi. This was, I just want to say this is really great. And I did, I just want to piggyback on Chris's feedback. I think really this um, presentation would be great for the transition committee because it does start at the school level to ensure that those parents know that this service is available to them and also to give them the skills that they need in order to, for them to be able to support, you know, their loved ones. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, I we're transition in committees. Yes, that's that's where we usually we aim for because as again, it, there, that's the time um, for us to be known and be seen by the families. And Thank I you. do I appreciate that I, we will make sure that you go to that transition committee meetings. Also, by the way, the parents are allowed to go there too. Perfect. Regardless if they have a dis developmental or other disabilities, I want you to know by law, they're allowed to participate. If they yeah. want to come to the advisory council for support because they live in Brooklyn, I welcome them with open arms to, and we work together. I also hope that you, you and your, the parents go together to the IEP meetings. That's where and, a lot of things have to be fixed. Right. And like, and as I um, Kate Hoy, who's in education at HRC, that's where she comes in. Um, and I, it's always about the parents, how they want the support and the advocacy. So we encourage, we can be there if you want us there. And some take it, yes, yes. And some are like, no, no, I'm okay. And, and sometimes it, it's okay that, um, that we weren't there because it wasn't something that they got rolled over for lack of a better term. Um, by by the DOE, but of course we keep pay attention to that. They know it's always a reminder leading up to it. 
knowing what's going on. And as I said before, we have Kate Hoy in education at HRC, who is uh, the, the contact I work with in terms of the DOE and providing support. And Kate Hoy is, she is on top of it. I've seen her in action. So uh, definitely as parents need it, as parents want it, we will be there for them and provide what they need. I'm very glad to hear that. It does make me feel better. I wish that Walter was for parents who didn't have developmental disabilities because we do, parents who have children with disabilities, no matter what type, the DOE constantly tries to roll over us and tell us that we do things wrong, especially like if we want, we don't want our children to be, we know it's not appropriate for them to be like in, a, in the, when they have the teen teaching or general ed, because we know the child may not be able to handle it. So it's, I wish they can recreate this program for non parents with non disabilities too, actually, or not developmental. I don't know actually if you know yeah. this, but uh, educational. So Kate Hoy, she just doesn't go in for with in terms of the parents with a disability. It's for the the, mm -hmm. the child. So mm -hmm. you can have an outside person. The DOE has has an I know that for the procedures. I know that. It's it's that. It's it's they 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 steamroll. Yes, some of them can steam do steamroll. Uh, unfortunately, but once you know your rights and you push back on that, they have a harder time um, doing as they want to do because, quite frankly, it comes across that I, I don't want to say it's a lack of interest. It, it just it's just the they have not too much knowing. They have too much work. They're overwhelmed. The ones who do know and do care, they constantly are overwhelmed and they have, they have to deal with their colleagues because I was a parent member and also Chris Treba, when he was with AHRC, he used to train me and other families, parents, so we could handle this because even though I'm a very good advocate, I used to bring my sons when it was called MSCs. One time I had two MSCs in the room with us. And they were trying to move things around. And I looked at them and I said, no. And we both said no together. And even had my child when he was ready and he wanted to be there. But we were really, but when they tried to steamroll me, I brought in backup help. Yeah. Because you yeah. need it. You have that right. It's because also I used to have them, we take turns writing notes. But uh, I, I, but you see, I do know about a lot of your other programs. But what I'm saying is the way you're doing this, Parents who don't have development disability, but are the parents of children with development disability need that help and support because if it's not easy to be a parent, it's already if not easy, any kind of disability, but also when you're the parent, it's very frustrating and hard. Yes. But I think there are programs that are similar in nature that provide this support. Not too much. I think. Not too much. Not the way you described your program. I know this. I know that. The way you described it and the way the others are doing it, no. They get they train you and then they send you in there without help, without somebody okay. there's a backup. That's the issue. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. It's the Thank advocacy, you. advocacy component is, is different. Right. Got it. Got yeah, it. it's different. I'm I'm just saying your program is excellent. I just would like it to have different variations around because I think it would be wonderful helpful to the fam to other parents but we ne right now we never know we can eventually get this done to have a variation but we also need to expand your program right i know that this is coming through opwdd so it's yes i know they incline i think it's it's probably what you're asking for is pushing it at the state level remember i'm um, the chair of the brooklyn family support advisory council and yours is a family support program because you're the children are living at home. So if we see that families let me know, or you let me know that, that and have parents contact me and say, we need this help, we need this help. Right. Then I've documented documentation saying, okay, it's great. We need, we need it to be a mirror type program so that we can get more help because of, of how the Department of Ed steamrolls our students and our children. That's the and, issue. So if you let us yeah. know, because I need data, I can't do this. You right. Know, you well, need the information. 
and right. I have my Take my familiarity is spe is specifically with the parents with the IDD. Um, and I hope they you fill out the uh, what they I hope they change the name consumer satisfaction surveys. Please oh, have yes. them fill it up. That's a big help for us. Then I can really fight for your program. Okay. And I do fight for other family support programs, but if you don't let me know, I can't. Advocate. Right. You you can advocate for what you know. Correct. Exactly. All right. And, so, and we are is, limited by knowledge by only what we are being informed about. So the more people true, speak to I, you, you can speak up, speak up, speak right. out so we can right. receive. And they can always email us or you can help them with the email. They can email me because that's also fantastic documentation. I will. As, Thank as, you. Right. Yeah. That, that's what, one of, oh, something I forgot to mention is the, we use a tablet, which is very helpful. Um, yes. The visual mm -hmm. experience. It was amazing. Uh, I was teaching a mom. It was it was three of us working with her, and I giggle a little because it was it was fascinating. Where literally one of us is crawling up the stairs, one is standing next to mom and explaining, and the other one is acting as as mom trying to get the child to go up the stairs. And we're doing this, and as soon as we showed her a baby crawling on the tablet, it it was it was wonderful because she was just smiled. I get it. I know. I she just. I get it. I understand. And, and it was so exciting. And that, and that's one of the moments that I really love about what I do when it just, everything coalesces and then boom, we have a balloon moment and it just, it's great. It's, it was wonderful. So I, I would definitely say visuals and tablets are, we use that and it's extremely helpful and a wonderful bridge in the conversation of modeling. Well, thank yeah. you very much for that. Does anybody else have a question or statement would like to have anything to say? Anybody? I just want to say, Go ahead. I'm just going to say thank you for the opportunity and the time um, to allow me to present this program to you all. And I greatly appreciate it um, and look forward to presenting for the transition and um, Chris making the connection there for me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And we will also, yes. And the advisory council will also set up uh, meetings with you too, because the families need to know about this. Okay. Rose, you have anything else you would like to say? Cause I'm muting now. No, I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to give us this pertinent information. And I guess we'll look forward to continue working with you, referring families that are in need to you. Oh, great. Wonderful. Same here. Thank you. All right. Shall we move on to our next um, agenda items? Yes. So our next meeting um, is going to be February 8th, same time, same place. And we are also going to have a presentation. Um, I believe it's from Prime America as well, uh, or from Prime. We will have that information available and shared with everyone on the call. Yes, it does. Uh... The our presenter will be explaining services for the youngsters, but it's also our seniors. We do have seniors with developmental disabilities too. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Living at home, living at home. Mm -hmm. Nobody, they, the society never thought our children or and and do people with developmental disability could even live to old age. So, we're proving them wrong. Uh. Okay, Rose, what's the next item item on the uh, agenda? I believe it's chair report. Um, I don't know, Debbie, if you want to go ahead and make yours. Cause... I'll finish the other report. The okay. other thing, I'm, I'll make this, uh, okay. We do hope everyone shows up to the advisor, the joint meeting. Uh, you see, there, there she is. The next family provider, Chris put it up. It's going to be Wednesday, February 8th. Okay, as you see. That is the number for the ID number for that meeting. Uh, I do know Ivan 
Rodriguez and Prime Home Health Services. She'll explain how her program works with, as I said, individuals who are young, but also who have who are aging. So we hope everybody and please pass the word around about and have people come to this one. The next, um, can you put it up? The next joint meeting will be on the last Wednesday of this month. Uh, it's very important what I was talking about with our Kathy Hochul, our new governor. The budget's coming, and we need to know about the budget, what's going on with OPWDD. We hope the funding is they they keep our funding. We need to make sure that our direct care professionals who care, and because of them, we're able to have this this the service system we have will be paid appropriately. Also, once you know, you know Tom McLevin of IAC had retired, and now it's Winnie Ship who has taken over. But now, from now until March 31st, we need to advocate for our programs. Also, you know, there's a proposed changes for the Medicaid waiver. There will there's information on the advice, Brooklyn Family Sports Advisory Council from in New York City Fairs. They have meetings coming up to discuss this. Please go on also the OPWDD website. If you have trouble getting through, go through the advisory, which is www.bfssac.com. Please go through and check there. We do have links and updated information. Any information you send for the advisory council will be not put on. We need it by this Friday and will not be put on to the advisory council's website until Saturday. We shut it down for a little bit so that we can add and update new information. So I hope everybody comes to the different meetings we have. Also, all the schedules of which meetings are which, like for our family provider, our transition committee, and also, uh, yes, I will also give you one update for the legislative front. It's going to be virtual again. And if you need to, you would, you register through the advisory council. We'll let you know when the registration will be open. Joyce Levin is the chair of the Brooklyn Developmental Disability Council. She will explain more of how it's going to be done. But I do hope everybody does show up to all of our next meetings. Rose, I'm done with my report. Is there any other reports you have? No, I don't, Deb. Um, I've only had the announcements for the next meeting. Okay. Mr. Christopher Greif, do you have any announcements or things you want to bring up? Well, did he hear me? Okay. I don't know. Oh, well. He heard you. It's the one minute. He heard you. Oh, okay, because I can't see it. I should turn on the video and then I'll see him. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we have all the updated information because he has the list. All right, I'll go off again, my video. Can you guys hear me now? Can oh, you guys, guys hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes, yes, we can. Yes, we can. I'm muting now. Go Good, ahead. Because right now, the microphone. Right now, the microphone. Do you want to use my laptop? Come in here and do, use my laptop to make your announcement. I got it. I got it. Okay. It just what happens is when there are four microphones goes on, but it's it's not it's it's just the they've been doing some microphone upgrades. I don't care. We're fine. Let me move on. First of all, as Deborah mentioned, some of it, but I want to remind everyone there is some other business that we do need to remind everyone. For starters, I like to remind because Joyce just asked me to make sure to make sure to remind everyone the meetings you're attending, and I'm going to say this because it's on video. And Rose, I, Debbie, I hope you hear me this clearly. Um, as to remind you all that these, we hope to see parents, agencies, care coordination to attending. 
and I understand care production has to be in other other areas, but they have staff. We hope to see them there attending. One thing I'm going to remind everyone in the 2023, we are getting ready to do the redistrict for the New York State Assembly. There is a draft available now. It's on our website, which I repeat again, it's on our website on our news update page. And it is representing all parts of all parts of New York. Every 10 years, as I, we said this last year, and I say this every year, every 10 years when you do the censors, the numbers have to be added in, and then it changes the districts of every elected official from Congress to the uh, New York State Senator, New York State Assembly, and City Council. Now, City Council is this year combined, I'm sorry, this year is the Assembly. It's all confusing because all the districts right now between Assembly and City Council are all being rechanged. So I will remind everyone, please recheck your districts when they're coming in and please pay attention when Board of Election lets you know if your election district is changed. We will keep you informed with Ariel and everyone else as well. Uh, as a reminder, everyone, mask is still optional on train stations and buses as well as access right now if you are entering a building and it says you must wear your mask that is their choice as i remind you it's an optional uh hospitals you still have to wear your mask inside i will if you don't like wearing a paper mask wear a washable mask it does go in quicker and get out quick it does help you the main thing is face covering 100 percent now as deborah mentioned and i hope our other speakers here our next the next transition meeting and they do meet on zoom and just let everyone know they do meet at zoom at this time unless they change the meeting id code this is their code right now um they will meet on january 19th that will be on a thursday uh it will be nice to see everyone please attend that well as well as well as attend the provider information committee which is you know we are as rose mentioned the speaker already with deborah and we want to make sure everyone please attend those meetings as well and pass the word out you know it's nothing to hurt of sharing information out there with this information but we always remind you helping families with development disabilities helps in brooklyn now reminding as deborah mentioned our next joint meeting and i apologize because the screen likes to skip the next joint meeting is coming up will be january 25th will be the fourth wednesday we hope that as Joyce and I and Brian agrees with me on is we we were supposed to have the three CCOs to do their full presentations and give us some updates. So if you have questions or comments you want to say, bring them to that meeting that day. And please make sure that you sign in by 930. We like to try to start meetings on time performance. And I think everyone in here will agree with me on that as well. We try to start on time. And we like to see more attendance on everyone to please attend. Now, as some of you are maybe not really, maybe are paying attention or maybe are, I don't know. I'll remind you that the Brooklyn Family Support Service Advisory Council is doing a presentation with the MTA with op, the new MTA Reduced Fear card, which is called Omni, which is, stands for O-M-N-Y-1 Metro New York. Now, due to the bad weather that's supposed to be coming here, we are now all virtual. So it will be, we remind everyone to please be there at 1015 so we can start at 1030 a.m. sharp. It doesn't matter if you're there, how many people are there, we still do the recording. We will still, you know, making sure everyone to remind you, please bring your questions and comments. Everyone is welcome. And I remind you, this link is also available on our website as well. Now, I want to make clear that our executive, our executive assistant from the Brooklyn Advisory Council does check the voicemail during those hours, Monday through Friday. If we don't answer during a holiday, it's a holiday. And we do not answer on weekends. So I'll please make that clear. Mrs. Menino does check it at least six to four times a day. And she does do it. But I'd like to remind you, if you're going to leave a voice message, please be clear and slowly. Because it's not fair to us and the DDRO, if we cannot understand what you're saying. So please, let's make sure. And I hope to see everyone attending that. Everyone is welcome. This is an opportunity to understand the new future card. And it's just not just reduced fear, but future Omni card as well. They're both gonna be an optional help. 
As a reminder, everyone, as we start tonight until March 9th, uh, MTA will be doing their Brooklyn redesign. Now, I'd like to remind everyone the redesign for Brooklyn is very important. And I'd like to remind everyone that it is important. This is a first draft, and we want to see everyone to please attend. We can understand you can't make it, but put your comments into the MTA website. So, therefore, they hear your voices on this. And in the future, we will be making sure that more update information is available for you at this test in time. Now, regarding that also, if you are having accessibility problems, say like curb cuts, uh, accessibility issues, make sure you please get this information. Edmund, he, and I'm not saying his last name because it's very hard, and please don't anyone say it because it's really hard. He is our accessibility representative for the Department of DOT, which is the New York City Department of Transportation. There is his information. He does get back to you. And we've been working with him right now in Brooklyn and as well as uh, the other borough is being worked on, which is Queens right now. But at this time, if you have any comments or concerns and any DOT issues, or if you know on the bus redesign, bus being removed, say something. And right now, remind everyone, part of the holiday gifts, here are stations that the MTA board has passed, which will be these stations in all the borough roads. There's one of your stations. Um, so those are the stations for the, up, the upgrading to the next accessibility. Some stations are actually being worked on. Some will be starting, like Queensborough Plaza. Uh, we will should be seeing soon more Brooklyn stations almost done, which is 7th Avenue. Uh, Loma Street Metropolitan and Grand Street elevators will be almost done. Well, should be done later this summer. Um, other stations right now are being uh, just which has passed by the board, so we will see them soon. So please make sure you have this list and it is available on the MTA's website, which is slash accessibility. As a remind you all that now, as you know, that bathrooms are now open, but not every stations. These are the stations are open. I uh, will remind everyone to please remind yourself they're only open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then from 12 to 1, they're not open because they will be clean. I think we all want to make sure the bathrooms are clean so we can all breathe in it, if you know what I mean. And remind everyone the customer centers will be opening soon. Uh, these are the stations. The first stations will be open, the date to be announced. Um, in Brooklyn, it will be Atlantic and still Avenue Coney Island. And then later on, Myrtle White Corp, which is in the border between Brooklyn and Queens, that will be open in the other end, maybe around 23 or 24. To be announced, more stuff coming soon on that. And as I said before, if you if you don't you cannot attend us and you want the MTA to come to you, here's the information right here. You can always email to the accessibility at mtahq.org or contact the MTA Government Relations for seniors, and there's their phone number. Or you can send them a letter either way to the system on accessibility or MTA government to this address to Broadway, New York, New York, 10004. So please, let's try to do our part to make sure information is shared. And I remind everyone, if you have any announcements or information you'd like us to put into our website, please email us at the BFSSAC at yahoo.com. Uh, we are on Facebook and Twitter, and soon another surprise will be coming up soon. Uh, but if you cannot reach OPWDD, there is their phone number and language assistance is available in the bottom. Our email address you see, and as again, remind you, our phone number is there. We only check our voice message between the hours of 930 to 530 from Monday to Friday. So I hope this answers everyone's questions on this as we are Brooklyn Tough and we keep it tough every time. Does that, anyone has any questions? Questions? Rose? No questions, Chris. As a matter of fact, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone I just put in the chat today, but I have to get off the call. Um, I got it. Okay. I sent thank it you. to you. Thank you. you. All right. Bye. No everyone. problem. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your week. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. You're welcome. Yeah. Now, uh, does anyone have any announcements for us? 
and I'm going to check our name. I know Rose already said her announcements and stuff. And I know Rose has to run. We'll miss her very much. Uh, let me just check. Pearl or Michelle, do you have any announcements or you've been very quiet? Pearl or Michelle? I have no announcement. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Pearl? I have no announcement. Thank you. Okay. But both ladies, can you please identify where you're from, please? Because I only see first names. Yes, it's important. We'd like to know which agencies, if you're a parent or which agencies you're with. Thank you. Okay. I'm with Pearl. I'm with Ohio. Pearl, oh. you, you're breaking up. Can you repeat that again? Um, yes. Yeah, so yeah. Hill. Yeah. Hill. Uh, Pearl, can you put your contact you information in the, in the chat, in the, please? In the chat. Sure. Thank you. And Thank Michelle, you. where Thank are you from? Where are you? I am Michelle I'm Robinson from Jewel Human Services. Oh, good. Can you please well, put your contact information in the chat for us? We'd appreciate it. Thank okay. you. Since both ladies, uh, when they have a second, they put their information in. Um, I'm going to remind everyone, does anyone uh, since no one else has any questions or an announcement, I'm going to say thank you everyone who attended the provider information. And as I remind you, hope to see everyone attending the other meetings. I want to thank our speaker who was here today, and I think we had a good dialogue and questions. Yes, I want to thank her very much. I appreciate it. And I want to thank everybody who attended today. Please pass the word out. Because, and if you have any ideas for any future subjects we you feel we need to, to work on, please let us know, and we will do our best to get them. Thank you very much. And thank you, Pearl. Thank you, Michelle, for your contact information. We appreciate it very much. So if anybody doesn't have any other announcements or anything else, we want to wish everyone a belated happy new year and happy holidays. And now I want to thank everybody as the co-chair. As no Rosal, we appreciate all your showing up, but we do need help with you to tell us what subjects or help you need so we can have it addressed through our meetings. Thank you. So I'm going to give everybody one more chance. If anybody else has anything they want to bring up, Announcements or any, you have a chance within the next three minutes. Thank you. Oh, how about the next two minutes? Let's just, because if no one else does, let's let, let, let them go. All right. We're going to let everybody go. Thank you very much. Everybody have a great day. Stay safe. Thank you. Meeting is ended. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Please have a wonderful and safe day. Bye.